So, for those wondering why I didn't have a video up on Monday, it's because I couldn't due to the fact that, well, I, I shouldn't say I couldn't. I probably could have done a different video than what I was originally going to do. What I originally was going to do, though, is uh, this Xbox DVD drive. I had to adjust a, a potentiometer on the laser, but this board was just hanging off by just these two wires here, and I didn't want to risk yanking anything, so I removed them from the board. And when I went to go and try to resolder them, the soldering station would not come on at all, which is kind of weird. But okay, whatever. So I checked the outlets, checked all the cords and everything. Everything seemed fine. I even checked the fuse. The fuse was fine. So I opened the station up. And it's going to be tough to see, and I can't get any better angle, unfortunately, where I'm at, but here it is. If you look right here, that is the back half of the fuse holder. <laughs> so even though the fuse is working, it was not doing anything because, well, there was no other end there. So what I'm going to have to do is put on a new fuse holder. And I did order a bunch. So, should be good to go. This is what one of them actually looks like here. I'll move this out of the, the side for now. That's what one looks like. Real simple, just unscrew, fuse goes in, etc. Now, I'm hoping that this will physically fit in here without having to enlarge the hole. They do have some sort of resin or something to hold it in place. Now, of course, the problem with my soldering station not working is that I have no way of soldering the new one. So I picked up a little just portable uh, soldering iron. Same company, same premise. It just, it, it's got its own little built-in controls and everything, which is kind of nice. And it, because it's portable, I'll be able to use it elsewhere, not just stuck in my little retro dungeon here. So first thing is first, I'm going to have to remove the old fuse holder and then desolder some of these wires. And it looks like they're using heat shrink tubing, so I may have to get some fresh tubing as well, which I should have somewhere. All right, so I'm gonna have to try and remove the old tubing without damaging the wire. Not that I can't get another wire, but I don't know if I have anything that's close to that, and I don't wanna have to wait any longer. So there's that, I'll worry about that in a minute. I wanna remove the fuse holder itself, which Actually, I think it'll be easier if I try to desolder this first. Let's turn on the, the exhaust fan. Not that it'll do a whole lot of good with this being buried in here, but at least I'll have something. Probably should put a bigger tip on here, but that, that should work just fine. Perfect. Now it should be easier to remove the old fuse holder. or not. Need a pair of pliers. Are these can be large enough. This is such a soft plastic that I think what I'm doing is I'm squeezing it and preventing it from actually turning. So for some reason I can't find a regular set of pliers anywhere. I've probably got them in the garage or something. I've got these mini vice grips here, but... Well, that was an ordeal. I don't have any sort of resin or epoxy or thread lock or anything unfortunately so I'm hoping that it's going to be enough just to keep it screwed in. Of course I don't have a lighter to uh, shrink these down with. Now we don't really use a heat gun but since that's inoperative right now I have to use a soldering iron. It won't be as good of a fit but it should be good enough. I'm 
guessing with these two washers, one goes on the outside, one goes on the inside. And at least it does look like it's going to fit. Again, I wish I had a some sort of adhesive I could put on there besides hot glue. I've got some super glue, but that won't adhere great to the metal. Although, the little bit of the residue that's still left on there from whatever adhesive they used, that might be enough. We'll see. Not tight enough where I can still loosen the fuse holder cap, so that should be good. Unfortunately, this wire is definitely not going to easily fit inside the hole to give it a good, secure fit. I'm gonna make it a little easier. Oh, well, that could work. Doesn't have to be a perfect bend, just enough. And now some solder. Good. And now same thing with the bottom one. At least the new soldering iron is working pretty well. All right, heat shrink tube. I might have used a little bit too long of a piece, but that's fine. It's not like this stuff isn't abundant. Better safe than sorry. Now I hate this part just because of the fact that potentially gum up the soldering tip. I've got a mini torch lighter that I use sometimes when I'm cooking, but I don't know if that's too overkill for something like this, or it might uh, melt some things that I might not want melted. So yeah, the tip's a little dirty, but that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna box this back up, put a fuse in, and see if it blows up or not. All right, here goes nothing. Came on, and it's working. Yay. So, now I have two soldering irons, which is great. I have my reflow station here, which I can do all of my main work on, all the larger jobs, things like that. But now I have a portable one, too, that I can use for uh, smaller projects like replacing a CMOS battery or uh, if I'm doing another Game Boy mod to solder the speaker onto the new PCB, things like that. And then I've got this one again, for, like I said, for the bigger jobs. So cool, I've got more tools that I have needed for a while and this one's repaired. And I hope this video was helpful to you guys in case you run into a similar issue. At the very least, I hope it was entertaining. So if you've liked today's video, go ahead, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. But again, as usual, there's never any obligation, although I do appreciate it. If you didn't like this video, hit the thumbs down, but please leave a comment below as to why, so I can use that to try to help things going forward. Thanks all, and I'll catch you later.